there. Make sure you turn on the light. Your light. Which one? Dave? Yeah. yeah. You want to do his right or his left? Stop. Okay, so we'll just go to the right. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Dave. We're already ready? Well, welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's been about 80 days since my last. COVID-related press conference, July 22nd. Since that time, we've had a statewide increase of 21,262 new cases of COVID. In Pennington County, during the same time period, we've gone from 756 cases 3,207. Active cases in Pennington County have gone from 152 to 673. Pennington County in the past eight months has experienced 41 of the state's 288 deaths. As of today in South Dakota, one out of every 30 South Dakotans has been tested positive for coronavirus. And today, one out of every 146 South Dakotans is an active case. So uh, that's some pretty radical change in the last 80 days. I can't say, though, that it wasn't expected. Uh, but I can say with confidence it does still not measure up even slightly with the original undereducated uh, predictions that we had very early on in the pandemic. We had some pretty grim outlooks for the rates of infection and death, and uh, we're still not even scratching the surface of those early predictions. You can see here by the chart to my right, uh, the total positive cases as it has gone up since March. March on the left of the chart and October uh, today, October 13th on the right. So it's a substantial increase. This was probably like the spike we were all expecting sometime back in March or April or May and didn't receive. Meanwhile, in the, uh, in the other color, which is uh, red, orange, or something, we see that the active cases have remained very steady from uh, late May all the way up through late August, very consistent with active cases. And active cases are, are uh, the sum of all of the new cases uh, and then subtracting out the recovered cases. So uh, we see very consistent. And then a uh, pretty good bump through late August, early September, and then a new constant uh, in the middle of September. And now we are uh, taking a step uh, upward on this chart now with active cases. So the state active cases are uh, significant this one, any county cases are a reflection of those state cases, but on a smaller scale. So the conclusion is that the pandemic is 
progressing in South Dakota. And I don't think that's news to anyone. We see it every day on multiple uh, media outlets, TV, radio, print, social media certainly uh, is a vehicle for uh, transmitting all of this information to all of us multiple times a day. So I've already not told you anything you don't know. Uh, hospitalizations today are uh, around 300 statewide for COVID, uh, 49 of those in Rapid City, and still lots of capacity left. Uh, extra capacity was built in early in the uh, pandemic, and there uh, remains, uh, uh, that capacity remains. That by no means is an invitation to go out and uh, have a COVID party so you can end up in the hospital. It's just saying that we're not at the crisis level that was once feared with the hospitalization rate. Hospitals are also continuing to experience uh, increased hospitalizations due to deferred health care. So uh, procedures and other illnesses where treatment was put off during the earlier stages of the pandemic and now uh, we're getting around to uh, seeing those patients now. So uh, since I've worked for the government, since I've represented government here locally in Rapid City, uh, let's talk about the uh, government intervention. A physicians group at Monument Health has passed a resolution among its members uh, urging the city to adopt a face mask policy. I just happened to notice um, in the last week the Sioux Falls Argus leader has effectively given up on state government and is now calling on local officials to show leadership on the issue of the pandemic. The daily emails and other messages that come into the mayor's office here at City Hall remain consistent. Uh, some of them urging a mask policy, and while others condemn the idea of it. So uh, to expand a little bit and continue talking about the masks and whether or not the city is uh, gearing up for a mandate, I just want to share a few things. First of all, there's a wholesale misunderstanding of the effectiveness of face coverings, what their purpose is. Just a few hours ago, it was about 11 o'clock today, I got an email from a guy, he's a critic of everything, but he sends this uh, non-news source email or, or webpage link where someone is writing an opinion piece about face masks and he summarizes a CDC study where a good share of the people who contracted COVID in, in this study were wearing masks virtually all of the time. So the proof was clear to this person who sent me this message that face masks don't work. So we are eight months into this pandemic, eight months of talking about things like protective measures and masks. No one, no one has ever said a white face covering will strain out coronavirus and protect you. That was never the intent of urging the public to wear a face covering. The face covering is to keep the person wearing the mask from spitting while they're talking or coughing or sneezing on people around them. It will not screen out the finest aerosol particles of this or any other virus or any other contagion that may be floating in a certain environment. That was never the intent to keep you from spitting on others. So the person who sent me the message is correct. That a, a single layer cloth face covering, even a multi-level level, uh, multi-layer face covering will not protect you uh, from that virus. So, um, but again, the point of the mask is to protect others, 
not you, and you rely on others wearing masks to keep you safe as well. Some, some, eight months later, we continue to get feedback that some people still believe that mask wearing is some sinister government control tactic and that it is here just to give government an opportunity to control its people. So um, if you believe that about masks, if you believe that face masks are of no value, and the next time you're getting ready to have surgery, why don't you ask the doctor not to wear a mask? Because he doesn't wear that mask to protect himself or herself. They wear the mask to protect you. So here's the difficulty contemplating a mask mandate. The community is sharply divided on this issue. The city council is divided on the issue because they're a cross-section of the community. Uh, if, if South Dakota cities or local, other local governments are to enact mask mandates, uh, essentially they derive that authority from a very vague, hundred-year-old statute that gives uh, municipalities the ability to protect against the spread of disease. It's a very, very vague statute. It would never pass muster in modern-day lawmaking being that vague, but it exists. So you could say on one hand, that ability exists. And as I've said before, cities like Rapid City only get their authority by what has expressly been written in state law uh, in, by the past uh, sessions of, this, of the uh, state legislature, giving us that express authority. So the flip side of that is this. You all know what the state's position on the pandemic has been in pandemic mitigation. So this January, the South Dakota State Legislature will uh, convene in peer, and uh, it is very possible that they will strike that 100-year-old statute from state law to revoke uh, municipalities' authority to govern such things as wearing masks or preventing the spread of the disease. The same state legislature that many of them, perhaps all of them at one time, had a campaign flyer that said they were for local control. That same legislature will not think twice, not, not waste a minute in stripping that existing authority away from cities. So let's say we were to pass a state or a citywide uh, mask mandate. We can't enforce it. We don't have the police resources to enforce it. We don't have enough code enforcement. I doubt we could hire enough people. We could decommission uh, existing city employees. We could divert their duties over to enforcement. And now you've got the government out there in the streets stopping people walking around uh, conducting their business to make sure they have a face covering over their face. I don't think Rapid City uh, can survive that. I'm not saying that that's always going to be uh, something we don't uh, consider. I mean, the circumstances here are certainly different than they were 80 days ago when I last talked to you. So who knows what the next 80 days will bring or the next 800 days. No, it's, it's proven already that nobody can predict the future uh, concerning this pandemic. Uh, so here, more locally, we have a uh, we have a mask mandate in Brookings, South Dakota. A few weeks ago, they enacted a mask mandate. Uh, the feedback from the city has been relatively positive. They get hate mail still, but. Uh, Besides a, a painful city council meeting, 
things seem to have gone okay, except the witnesses report to me that mask compliance in Brookings has been unchanged. Already I saw someone who linked a chart that was not referenced showing that as the, the, virtually the minute Brookings enacted the mask mandate that their cases plummeted. Uh, we're we're going to see that. I imagine we'll also see the reverse of that where uh, nothing happened or the cases got worse. This is the time, this is the circumstance where people will uh, seek to manipulate that to get their own uh, result. So, um, anyway, we need to talk about the alternatives to, to a mask mandate. So, currently, today, I am speaking with uh, a marketing firm to help launch a new marketing campaign, a professional marketing campaign around the importance of wearing face coverings. All of us, every one of us, including individuals and groups and organizations, should have a renewed commitment to safe practices. We should be limiting group size and we should be controlling the setting that uh, where those groups uh, are meeting. Frankly, everyone should wear a mask when it's not possible to maintain social distancing. And if you're one of those who are living life normally because you're exhausted from the pandemic and you don't believe in its uh, consequences, if you're living life normally, my advice to you is to just uh, stay away from those who are trying to observe safe practices. You can still infect people who are wearing masks. Also stay away from grandpa or other high risk individuals because it's not fair to them. And if a store has a mandatory mask policy, wear one. I don't know why you would go into a local store that says masks required and not wear a mask. At this point in the game, eight months later, you look foolish. Everyone stares at you because of how foolish you look. So it doesn't make good sense. I have seen one store locally who enforces the mask mandate. But they won't allow you to check out. They won't allow you to buy their stuff if you're not complying with their, with their policy. And that's a corporate policy. And the employees there don't have control over that. And in my own opinion, my my own opinion as a mayor of Rapid City, I think all stores should consider implementing a mask policy. If you ever watch those, uh, if you ever watch TV and there comes a commercial on from a bunch of uh, lawyers from out of state, and they're gonna ask if you ever used earplugs from this state to this state, or if you ever tried this product, and now there's a big class action lawsuit. Imagine how many years or decades we will be hearing TV lawyer advertisements for uh, contracting COVID, being maimed or killed from COVID. So, um, changing topics slightly. One of the issues that's going on here and everywhere, and I talk to uh, mayors across the state every month and uh, I talked to the Sioux Falls mayor uh, more regularly, but um, our community mental health is strained. It's hard going through a pandemic. None of us knew this before, did we? This is our first pandemic. All of us here, it's our first pandemic. So we're suffering a little bit with the exhaustion from the effects of, uh, of the COVID pandemic. Conflicts are more common. We have uh, criminal justice data to back this up. We have more fights, more assaults, uh, more confrontations. Protests are more prevalent. And you might just think that this was the year where coincidentally all of the social issues came to a boiling point. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, you're not 
exactly like, uh, accurate on that point. This is a point where uh, everyone's uh, tolerance for things they don't believe in or support uh, has run out. Uh, personal temper management seems to be more challenging than it has been before. So we're exhausted as a community. And I'm here to tell you that uh, we're not at the end of this pandemic. And hopefully we're halfway through it. But this is going to go on for a while. And so we've got to do some things to help us a little bit, to help us live our lives. Here's some of the things I'm suggesting. You can try to limit your media intake a little bit. The media brownout. I would say your best bet for television media, news especially, are your local news outlets. Your newspaper, television, and radio. That's where your news, uh, I hope the bulk of your news is coming from. Uh, and especially uh, social media. You know, social media has done nothing but harm this nation, including our community, uh, as it concerns the uh, pandemic. Uh, you can put any, any topic up there and you can see how social media has made it worse. The uh, presidential election campaign, uh, local campaigns, state campaigns, all made worse by social media. I'm here to tell you right now, as someone who's a someone who participates in social media because I feel like it's a part of my job. At the end of the day, depending on how much, how much time you spend on Facebook, you'll be dumb at work. Uh, you will learn less and get angrier watching Facebook and following uh, all of these things that, that, that you think are entertaining to you. Uh, there's not much for you there in terms of enriching your life. Chances are, You've already voted, or you already know who you're going to vote for. So my suggestion is stop watching politics. It's not enriching your life. It's taking away from it. Focus on the positives, the family, the recreation, the outdoors, the things that make you happy. Uh, exercise and eat healthy food. Stay hydrated. Read a book. Gotta, I think you got to get out of that uh, rapidly flowing, controversial cycle of information that comes in your ears and your eyes every single day. It's contributing to your exhaustion as far as this pandemic is related. If we're to really get through this together, we have to share a goal together. I think you've probably heard that saying we'll get through this together we're not getting it through we're not getting through it together yet we're getting through it on our own as individuals if we are to be together we have to share a common goal today the concept of community is more important than ever so let's stay focused spend some of your time worrying about someone else other than yourself Let's see how we can work through this together to get to the point where we can be on the same side. This pandemic is not done yet, and uh, we all need to uh, do our part to keep ourselves and others healthy. So I'll take any questions you have now. Uh, you can go to the uh, podium and ask. We we'll appreciate it. Yes. Um, so as far as those businesses that you think should be, you know, having these mask mandates and things like that, as far as the people who aren't following those rules and aren't following those mandates, what do you what do you encourage them to do if, if that happens or if they see those customers? Well, if you're a business owner or manager and you've got a mask mandate policy for your store and someone's not abiding by it, uh, I think it's time to show them the door. Uh, they may boycott your business, uh, but I think in the end, uh, I see the I see the indications here community wide. There's way more acceptance to wearing masks today, uh, even in small towns around us. Uh, there are mask mandates. That's where, that's just not hurting anyone. And these these businesses are private property, and you don't have to go in them. 
But I think if the business community were to bind together and all agree collectively that masks mandate for their businesses the best, then it would be an even playing field. Uh, but something we're doing something wrong here because we're we're getting infected at a very fast rate. So I believe we have some control over how fast uh, we spread this virus. So I'm not claiming that a mask mandate in a local hardware store will cure the pandemic, but uh, we should be more courteous. Yes. As you said, it's been 80 days since the last time you've done a COVID-19 update. Can we expect more updates from you on a weekly basis, or is this the only one for the foreseeable future? Good question. Uh, you'll be the first one to know when I know the answer to that. But I suspect I will be uh, doing this every week or two. Uh, I'll reevaluate here in the next few days and see what next week looks like. But uh, I probably would commit to a minimum of two of these a month at this point. And as needed, uh, you know, I'll go back up to one a day if that's what's uh, helpful to people. Um, as you said, you're suggesting to businesses to um, kind of encourage and enforce uh, their customers to wear a mask. Can we see? Will we see that on the city council as well? Well, some of the city council members do wear masks, uh, some of them during the meeting here, but you know, we have the city council members space appropriate. Uh, one city council member has recently asked to have plexiglass dividers up here. And um, so I think that's a reasonable and cheap request if that's what the council prefers. And um, so I think, our, I think our mask wearing council members are probably as uh, maybe Eight out of nine of them, or seven out of nine of them, consist of mask wearing individuals. So I imagine we'll see more of that everywhere as time goes on. A uh, question: um, Have you spoke with any um, businesses in the community to see uh, to get their feedback on if they will uh, be implementing mask mandates? No. Okay. No, nope, this is just my encouragement for them to consider mask mandate. I know I shop in some of the stores that have mask mandates, and some of them that don't. I wear a mask in any way, depending on how full the parking lot is and not my comfort level. But um, every time I'm there, uh, I see someone not wearing one. Walk right past the sign and said, mask required, and they're in there enjoying their freedom while everyone else is staring at them. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone in the room? Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, we'll let you know what the next one is. Thank you.